Welcome to Pavel's electric skateboard channel. He's the king of DIY and he likes to dabble with guns and drones and safety gear and all that kind of thing. So let's get started and end this intro with a Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Another video addition to my line of videos DIY and how to. What you see in the front of you here is a very strange board. It's an Urban 80 by Slick Revolution, but this board did evolve. Literally, because this board now has evolved all-terrain wheels and yes there were a couple of pictures on uh, websites where people put the fronts on because it's easy you take the original wheels off put the new ones on spot on the only issue you might come across with is the wheel bite on the rear unfortunately you cannot just grab the Evolve uh, kit and put it on slick revolution board on any other board understandable company tries to make the uh, wheels compatible to only their boats but this is where people like myself come through my engineering mind does never rest I've just recently reviewed the Urban 80 and it was awesome board and she still is an awesome board not yet available uh, but soon will be it's still a prototype but what I thought to myself how awesome would it be to join two best worlds small board but also to have an opportunity or chance to go off-road to go off-road you can either use the rough stuff wheels by slick revolution which are awesome there's nothing wrong with them but i wanted just a little bit more i have never tried airfield tires or wheels on my boards so i thought to myself let's do it the testing video is now out and hopefully you enjoyed it and liked it this video is being filmed before I even tested the board, so hopefully everything's going to be fine. So I thought to myself, what if you guys will decide that you want to do exactly the same and you need someone to tell you how? One thing I would like to mention to you guys and please listen very carefully. I am not a slick evolution engineer, I am not a evolution uh, board engineer, I am not the manufacturer, I am just a bloke in the garage who knows how to use his tools and with a big passion to try and things and passion to electrical skateboards do not do this if you're not comfortable to use tools power tools drilling cutting and so on and so forth this board and this kind of conversion is not tested it's not manufacturers uh, recommendation and it's not a manufacturers uh, kit this is just me playing around with stuff so take responsibility of what you're doing, so think, and if you do it, be very careful, test it, feel it, and if you're comfortable, crack on and enjoy it. So, step number one. You're using 4.5mm Allen, Allen key, and you're going to, to remove the belt cover. Ensure that you don't lose the screws and the washers that come with it put on the side. Step number two, you remove the nut of the wheel and then slightly rocking the wheel, you remove the rough stuff wheel of the wheel pulley. Next step, you will slightly pull on the belt and also the wheel pulley and you remove them. So now you have your belt and your original rough stuff uh, sorry, Slick Revolution wheel pulley. Put it on the side. Before you put the uh, wheel pulley on the side, take something like the Allen key or something like that and just push out the bearing out of the pulley. Just apply even pressure all the way around and eventually the bearing will come out. So what you do is, you put this on the side, hold on to the bearing, because you'll need it very soon. Next step, there is a rubber gasket right here on the axle. Remove it, 
because we will be drilling you don't want any shavings being on the rubber put it on the side next thing what we do we need to remove the motor if you want you can remove the uh, belt uh, pulley on the motor side but you don't have to there is a uh, smart design to this uh, pulley there's a little cutout as you can see over here and this is so you can get to the screws without removing the motor pulley so what you do is you line up your screw with the cutout on the pulley and using the same allen key that you did use for removing the belt cover you loosen up all four screws holding the motor in I use like an empty jar from all sorts of foods and uh, I think this is from the strawberry jam nice and I put all my screws in there so you don't lose them on this particular board there are some lock washes that were used to keep the bolts from falling out so I'm just using tweezers to find them before you move the motor on the side what you need to do is you need to cut this electrical uh, zip tie right here in order to loosen up the cable and it will be long enough for you to move the motor on the side just for now next step is to protect the bottom motor and you will remove the motor by just sliding it out there's a cutout in the motor mount which is a brilliant design I like it a lot and you rest it on a cable hence why I use the rag so nothing gets scratched up you don't want any of the shavings from drilling to go anywhere near the motor or any other parts I'm going to protect all the parts even further from all the shavings because as I said we will be drilling so next step guys you can do it two different ways you can either make yourself uh, a template like I did and chase out the uh, original holes where the uh, motor used to be fixed and then you push the template forward and then mark the new holes or you can just trust <laughs> what I'm doing here and pretty much in line with the centers of the original holes already what you need to do is a drill new holes just a little bit further out I'm talking about two millimeters no more let me mark it and I'll show it a bit closer so the original holes and these are the markings for the new holes so make sure they're in line you need to drill four more the way I recommend doing this is using a kit of different sizes of drill bits start with really small let's say two and a half millimeters or something like that and work all the way up to 4.2 millimeters the original holes required for the screws to go nice and tight is 4.2 mil so I'm going to start drilling this now After you drilled the first two holes, use a template, line out the new holes you just drilled, and remark the other two just to ensure that you have them right. It's very important to get them holes right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to puncture the centers of the holes just for the drill bit not to dance around on a smooth surface I recommend you go two or three different sizes between uh, drilling the first time and also going the four and a half millimeters 
the size they will require. So we're much closer to actually completing the project. The only problem is at the moment that if you will use the screws and you put them back, they will be protruding and the pulley on the motor will hit them. I have decided to use this bit here. This bit here is a countersink bit. Uh, a lot of cheapies use it when they build furniture and stuff. The material on the motor mount is aluminium and I've already done one side and it works just fine. You can also use a larger drill bit and kind of uh, don't go all the way through, just kind of two, one, two mil. That should work as well, but it wasn't very nice when I tried it on the first uh, motor. So I recommend you use the bit I'm using. And voila! Now we have countersink or countersink holes. So now when the screw goes in, it's nice and flush. So we almost completed the alteration. Let's now clean up, get all the shavings away from all the moving parts, vacuum up the area, and we're going to reassemble this board using the AT kit from Evolve. We we'll take the motor, you can now remove the rag and we we'll slide it back in this position and we we'll line up the holes and we we'll start catching the screws one by one. Please do not tighten up the screws all the way from the start because you need that little bit of movement on the motor to catch the rest of the screws. So after you caught all the screws what you do is you go around and you just tighten them up in diagonal so the pressure is spreads out spreads out evenly and the motor sits nice and straight after you ensure that everything is fine that you put everything together go for a test ride uh, not too long because you have to come back and put some Loctite on the screws. I would recommend to do so. It's up to you. Or you can do it straight away. Straight away, if you think everything's going to be uh, fine and you don't need testing, it's easier to reapply the blue block later. Otherwise, it's going to be quite hard to take them screws out. Do not over tighten the screws because they're only small, and you could ruin the thread, and it's going to be very very hard to take them screws out if you snap them or if you ruin the head. So step number one to put this all back together, rubber washer. The Slick Revolution bearing, nice and massive, very good. That goes down. You then install the evolved wheel pulley take a look what needs to be done to this pulley before you install it when you guys drill the uh, the pulley here do not just grab a big drill bit and go straight through I'm afraid you might crack the material. What I've done, which I didn't record because it's boring, I just went uh, from sizes going up to all the way to 13. So after, after I've done the 14, going up 16, guys. Remember, higher speed and less force. 
Let's see if it goes on the trucks. Perfect. So guys, 16. You need a drill bit 16. This is how originally the wheel pulley looks like. Evolve. And this is how it looks like after you drill it up. And that is absolutely perfect. So providing you just watch the, uh, the video and you have drilled out the middle of the Evolve uh, AT Kids pulley, she'll go straight on, no more problem at all. So you put the belt over the Evolve wheel pulley, put everything on the axle, and catch the teeth on the motor pulley. It spins nice and freely, no problem at all. Then you take the Evolve wheel, and you put the Evolve wheel, providing you already inserted the uh, bearings and the where spacers. Remember, there needs to be a spacer between the uh, bearings. And you position it on an axle, press everything together, speed washer and the lock nut, tighten it all up, all the way down really really hard, but then release it about a half, pretty much you need to kind of get used to uh, the feel of how the motor spins and how the wheel spins. You don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be loose either. But over tightening this knot is not very good. So what I normally do is, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of feel it. I kind of feel it being nice and free and not having any wobbles. And this just looks so awesome. Moment of truth. Let's turn the board on. And we got ourselves Urban 80 Slick Revolution board. Or you can do the same on a Flex E board. I think it's going to be even better. But I've chosen 80 just for the contrast of it. It's a small board with massive wheels. That should look awesome please make sure that you pay attention after you put everything together just take a look making sure everything is nice and where it's supposed to be nothing is catching just look at, at everything one more time the belts are nicely uh, sitting on the pulleys no issues anywhere nothing is loose then I would obviously run the balls on, on desk as well Don't go 100% speed when the board is not loaded, meaning that there is no uh, person on the top of it. Uh, it's not good for your speed controller. So just go reasonable speed, but not fully uh, maxed out. Just to ensure that the belts don't come off, that nothing is uh, looking weird. And that's it really. Bear in mind guys, this is just DIY, let's try it and see if it works kind of thing. That's why I'm taking this apart, because I have discovered that we need to raise the wheel pulley just a little bit higher, because the wheel pulley itself, right on the edge here, hits the motor pulley's little lip underneath, because they come too close to each other, which is not a problem, because rubber washer is good but when you over tighten the nut it gets the uh, pulley pushed down too much so what I'm using is it's just a filled gasket you can buy them in a plumbing shop so that goes in first then the rubber washer so this is just in case if you feel that after you assemble everything and you feel some sort of like a, like a sound like something is rubbing take a look uh, closely because that could be exactly what I just described 
the uh, wheel pulley is touching the uh, almost forgot the bearing sorry bearing goes in as well so the felt washer uh, rubber washer and then the bearing uh, so what I was saying is if you feel that something is kind of like rubbing and that could be exactly what I've just uh, explained and now look perfect this is perfect that's exactly what we needed just a little bit more space so let's put it back together and this is why I was saying guys you need to test what you do don't just jump on the board and go 25 mile an hour because you need to try it all out experiment and when you're 100% sure then you start pushing the board harder and harder so tight just to make everything sit and back half could go just a bit more beautiful okay now it sounds nice and free spot on <laughs> how awesome is this look at this it's like a mini evolve that is brilliant guys there's a couple of things that I need to mention for starters there's no more space left uh, around the motor here to install the belt uh, cover the original evolve a belt cover is already so tiny so it pretty much just covers the moving front of this belt here uh, with this DIY uh, I'll see if I can come up with something maybe guys out there who have the 3d printers can come up with some sort of cover uh, but to be honest with you looking at it the way it is you can't really get near it like it's so protected by the wheel so I don't know if it actually needs the belt cover that well, looks awesome. Um, the bad news is that I've just uh, tested the board uh, while well, standing on it. If you lean a lot, you do get a wheel bite. Because wheels are so massive and this deck was not designed for it. I think um, this conversion will be awesome on the Flex uh, e-board, especially Flex 2.0, because Flex 2.0 got much more power than the Urban 80. Uh, I need to cut this deck to get rid of the wheel bite. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. If you're willing to do so with your board, it's up to you, or just get a different deck. Plus, I don't know what kind of board you're going to be customizing. Just please make sure you test your board for the wheel bite. Because it's not pretty. When you're trying to turn, and all of a sudden the wheel hits the deck it's like it's like an inst instantaneous break your wheel come off so unfortunately I'm getting some wheel bite and I have to alter this uh, this deck a little bit because I still want to have the 80 on these wheels and this contrast of little boards with such as huge toys uh, I have no choice but to do this it gives me a rough idea of where I need to cut it. So if you compare with the Flex E-board uh, deck, there is much more space. So the wheels, I think, will be just fine, missing the corner here. But if not, there's enough for me to cut this off and alter if needed. I think it's going to be easier uh, to cut the deck uh, if I take the front trucks off. So in order to make a nice round uh, and neat cut, I'm going to use a hole saw. I could have used a jigsaw, but then trying to make both sides look evenly is quite hard. So I will use the hole saw.
and now the deck is cut. So now I'm using the off cut from this side there in order to get the straight right and the position right. This way they will look symmetrical. So let's line up the off cut. Mark exactly where we need to start. There we go. The deck is now cut. Hopefully no wheel bite. I'm going to clean up all these edges. Paint these uh, fresh cuts over here. And refit the trucks using double riser. Soft one. like new let's do the other side I'm going to be using a thicker uh, these are 11 I believe 11 to 12 millimeter uh, Risers, uh, riser pads. Yes, the 12 mil. I'm just debating to use the rubber ones or to use the uh, hardcore plastic. Well, because those wheels are air filled, I think I just go for the plastic ones. Guys, one thing I wanted to mention, if you're using the, uh, this nut for either your risers uh, or for the trucks or for the axles, they do have that plastic uh, ring. This is to lock the nut in place. If you take the wheels off or your trucks off quite often, I would strongly recommend that you change those nuts because the plastic does wear out and this locking uh, mechanism doesn't work as good anymore and this is something you don't want to happen is right in the board and the bolts and nuts coming off it especially when you don't know about it just an advice really but it's up to you just making sure they're not too tight spin nice and freely and then we're going to test uh, the wheel butt but again guys you're watching this video and it's actually a video of as happening so it's not a retro video after i've done everything made sure it's all good and then filmed it you're actually taking part in something in my mind in my opinion awesome so let's see if the wheel bite is still there so and the way I normally do this is I get on the board, I grab onto something so I don't fall off. Then I will turn all the way through and I'll move the board back and forth just to see if the wheels will bite. And bang. Yes, I do have a bite on one side and I also do have a bite on another side. So this corner is here. I still a problem. So I need to get rid of them corners, guys. 
So guys, in addition to the first cut, we need to make another, just to give you this corner here. And this is how the deck looks after the alteration. Nice little curves here, quite sexy, I like it, and there is no wheel bite. Sorry guys, I had to refilm this video here and that's why the deck is, no, uh, is all dirty. Because this is now past all the videos of me uh, testing this board fully. I will leave the link in the description below. Please check it out, a tiny 800mm a uh, new slick revolution board on 80 wheels but this um, uh, evolve kit alteration or adjustment to any other board can cover plenty of boards out there it's possible guys just use your imagination use your tools and if you have the wheel you can use any parts you want on your board so here we go I hope you like the video I hope evolve will not be very pissed off with me with uh, trying to uh, fit their kit onto non-evolved board but I played it fair I bought the kit uh, fair and square on eBay I tried to buy it on the website they told me I can't because I don't own an evolve fine no problem but here we go you know you can do it you know you can install the kit on uh, any other non-evolved board so if you like the video thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down up to you but if you dislike the video unless you are a hater which I got a couple of you guys out there thank you for being there for me uh, leave a comment tell me why you didn't like the video I'll improve I'll change it uh, yeah anyway so just for the ones who are still watching the video I'm sure it's gonna be very few of you it's a long video but unfortunately I just cannot help myself I want to cover everything in detail and trust me this video here started off with about three and a half hours worth of uh, uh, videos and I had to cut it down cut it down cut it down to about less than half an hour so um, if you want to see what I'm about to uh, cook up I've got plenty of ideas and I got some um, fittings here and parts for my new DIY I'm not gonna go into many details but it will be exciting it will be a powerful 7000 watt uh, board off-road and yeah it'll be exciting I'll be using uh, some new parts on it I will uh, come up with a line and series of videos of DIY and cover every single part I'm using so it'll be handed to people who are starting in the uh, world of electrical skateboards or who are already in it but don't want to spend the money on the parts I'm about to use and waiting for someone to review them. I'm here for you guys and as always, ride safely and stay tuned. Thank you very much.